Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial. Uh, so today, based on some of the questions we were getting last week in class, or this week in class, we're making a video tutorial to help you really boost those money shots um, and some extra techniques to turn them into million dollar money shots. So we want to see some really, really high, emotive, powerful imagery on your panels because it's going to be the biggest image on your panel as well and should really convey your concept very clearly. So it's it's very important to get this image and to get it working really well for you. So there's a few things that we can do to make your image sing a little louder. Um, and the first one being relationship with your piece of architecture and the context. So the context is really important and so is your architecture, but it's about making them really match together so that your architecture talks really conceptually, we can see what's going on there, and that your concept tells us where it is and what's going on. One shouldn't be more powerful or overbearing than the other, uh, or if so, then the architecture should be slightly more um, clear because you're trying to get across your concept. So a lot of people, it's great they've got context in the space, um, and some of you are working really well now to see a lot of context, rather some people are quite up close. So we do want to see quite a lot of context. We don't want to be too close to the project so we can't actually see anything. Um, so those of you doing well with good context, that's great. Uh, but the saturation and the lighting for your context is often quite different to what's created in your architecture. So we're going to have a little look at that now. So I've got my context on this layer here. I'm going to do some things to adjust it so that it starts to work better with my architecture. So I've got my context layer selected, I've got up to image, adjustments, and I want to bring up the levels. So first things first, we want to get that lighting and contrast working in a single sort of nature to what the architecture is doing. So we need to play with these ones, so it's important you can sort of play with the middle ground, it's a little bit darker, there's some sort of dark shadows in there, it's still a little bit soft and muted as well, so we can tweak these, these a little bit softer, yeah okay that's looking pretty good now, and you can see it's starting to read more as a whole, it, it will feel like the architecture belongs there more. So once we're happy with that, we can click on that. The next one we want to do is the saturation. You can see this image is heavily saturated compared to our architecture. So again, image, adjustments, now this time to hue and saturation, or you can use the hotkeys if you want to. So this one I'm going to bring right the way down. It's almost so it's gone. Here we go, about 70% of its original saturation. So letting this sort of soft colour become more apparent in the context. So that's gone down to 70%. And now potentially the lightness can change. So we can bring that down again. Image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. So the contrast is quite heavy. Might bring the contrast down a little bit to soften and maybe up a little bit. Yeah, maybe up a little bit. And the brightness can come down quite a lot. Okay. Cool. I'm starting to play with this a little bit more. Great. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do, once we start to feel like the context is relating more to the architecture, it becomes a little bit softer, uh, we can start to play with the blur that's happening in this image because we want to treat this like a photograph we've taken and for those of you who have an, an SLR camera or a um, professional standard camera you'll notice the aperture and those sorts of things um, as a function and what that will do is it will highlight a certain thing that we want to show and it will start to blur out more and more as we get away from it so that the focal point becomes on what we want and so we can do the same thing using Photoshop We've still got the context layer selected. We come up to filter, blur gallery, iris blur. And what that does is it creates this big 
circle of blur in the center uh, and you can put that over your piece of architecture, drag it over the top, change the size you want this thing to be, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit, a focal point here and as you bring this ring out it makes the edge of the focal point really sharp and as you bring it in it makes it softer. So we want it reasonably close and we can start to play with this blur level Wait for it to update. Here we are, blurring around the edges, we can see it blurring in nicely. And you'll notice that the architecture is now starting to really resonate on the edge. So press enter twice to lock that in. And you can see here we've got nice sharp edges to the architecture. But as we move further and further away from it, these things that are in context, while they're important, uh, we blur them out a bit so that they're still there, the information's still there, but the architecture is really starting to resonate, as you can see there. So we've got these things blurred now. This is really starting to sing. Now it might be time to uh, edit through the entire image together, now that they're relating to one another. Uh, we might bring up our filters that impact the entire image. So this one we want to play with the let's play with the photo filter. We bring some warmth to this image. That's good. Uh, let's have a look at the hue and saturation. So we might play with the overall saturation of the whole image. Play with the hue. There might be a certain color that's important back with your artist again. Maybe the lightness might come down a little bit. Okay, and then we can always have a look at this before and after and see which one we like better. Yep, happy with that. Right, let's bring that brightness and contrast again. So we can bring the overall brightness up, down a little bit. Maybe contour start. A little bit more. Okay. Yeah. And so the thing with these filters, rather than the image adjustments filters, these are directly editable. So if you decide later on you want to turn all these off, that you're happy without them, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's say that we want to stick with this one for now. We've got our image and our context starting to speak a similar language. Obviously, if yours is really dark, you might want to have um, dark images over the top of your uh, touchstone. So the contrast, you might want to turn that right the way up. You might want to turn your brightness down. So it really depends on you what sort of environment you're trying to create at the same time. So if you want the streetscape to feel a little darker, you want this to feel darker, you want it to feel lighter, that is at your control at all times. Okay. So if this is starting to work the way we want it to, we've got this blur radius starting to work now as well. Uh, but then what happens when we chuck it onto InDesign is that we really don't like this sharp edge. So say for example we want this to sit at either the top or the bottom of the layout but we want it to feather it in um, so that it doesn't have such a sharp line with the layout. So what we can do is create a new layer. There's a few ways to do this, but if you create a new layer, put your brush tool on with white, and I put the white to 40% opacity up here, 40%. Make your brush smaller by pressing the left uh, square bracket Start off relatively small and start painting in that top edge and incrementally increase your brush size by using the right square bracket. Go over a few times, keep increasing that brush size and eventually you'll find that that edge softens to a really low opacity white. So do that a few more times. I have to go back down smaller again just to make sure that top edge is done. There we go. Beautiful. Okay.
So now what that does is when we take this image onto our panel in InDesign, it creates a softened, here we are, creates a softened uh, approach to the top of the panel. So you can see from this line here, that's where the line of the image is. But now that we've painted a white feather over the top, it allows the entire panel um, to read upwards. And if you were to do the equivalent downwards, it would do the same thing. So for example, if this was our image and we had the sky at the top, but we wanted to feather the foreground, we could do the same thing again so that it softens down into the panel. And that's, that's a few ways that we can help make our money shots really, really sync for what we're doing. So if we have a little bit of a recap, uh, it's about getting your context and your architecture to sing together. So obviously we've darkened that just for the purpose of the illustration, showing you guys the different filters that you can use just to make it work the way you want it to work. Using um, over the top of your context, we've got the blur. So we've got filter, blur gallery, iris blur. And if we turn that off, we can see the difference in the context. It's all really bright and vibrant and in your face now, but if we turn this off, it softens it a bit and becomes more about the architecture. And then finally, using the white feather added on top, or we might go to the bottom of the page. We just reverse this. Bring it down here, and now when we bring that into our panel, we're going to have a nice soft edge at the bottom. Uh, and those decisions are really up to you about how you want this to fit with your layout. So again, in keeping with the video from last week and the InDesign video, it's up to you to use these skills and techniques to really, really push your design as hard as you can. Now, if, of course, as per usual, if there are any other things that you want to learn or any other skills that you need, feel free to send us a Facebook message or an email and we can try and make these video tutorials for you as quickly as possible. Good luck with the rest of your submission, guys. The work is looking really good. It's now time to start hustling, pushing everything out as much as you can and spending a lot of time in the presentations. The design is where it is. Let's move forward with crafting some beautiful panels ready for Tuesday morning. Everything due at 9am. We'll see you then. Very excited. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys.